What's going on my royal family? We are back again here on the R6 today. First of all, how are you guys doing today? I really hope y'all are having an amazing day. Because I am. Because we are back on the bike. It's been a cold week here and today it's not that much better but at least it's not raining anymore. I want to talk to you guys about all the pros and cons of owning this exact Yamaha R6. But first, we got to get some gas. I really like this quick release. Just look at her. Sheesh! She's shining in the sun. I haven't got this tank wrapped, as you can see. You can see a little bit of glisten. I'm not really sure if you guys can see that, but there's a rainbow glisten on the tank. Dang, I love this thing. We'll start out with the pros of the bike and then we'll go on to the cons. I'm gonna be telling you guys the complete truth about this bike because I've owned the bike for about two years now. And even before owning this bike, I had an 03 R6. This is a 2016 R6, if you guys didn't know. And I've been a big R6 fan my whole life. First and foremost, the sound of this bike. I absolutely love the sound of this inline four engine, especially on the R6. Especially when you're bumping through these gears, it sounds so nice. Let me give you guys a sound check. Sheesh! <laughs> that dog in the car is barking at me. Like, come on. Would you listen to those pops, man? I love this thing. I think the R6 is one of the nicest sounding bikes there are on the market. Comparing to the 1000cc bikes, there might be a little bit of a difference. I have deleted the catalytic converter on this bike. Ooh, look at this car. It's kind of nice. I'm getting distracted. I've deleted the catalytic converter on this bike. I put an M4 mid pipe on it and it has a two brother slip on. I do have plans to get a full exhaust soon. Hopefully your boy will get a sponsorship. I can't run a full SC project, but I would love to run some Acra headers to the SC project slip on later on in the future. I have a Dynojet Power Commander as well sitting around, so I gotta put that on. Secondly, other than the sound of the bike, this bike leans so well. Like it's so easy to flick around this bike, mainly because it's meant to be a track bike, but it's so easy to lean the R6. I'm not a big canyon rider myself. I used to ride a little bit in the canyons before, but I've completely stopped going on the canyons now because of just the dangers of riding around the canyons. A lot of my friends have gone down in the canyons and that is just not something that I want to do. I've honestly turned this bike into a show bike. As you guys have seen on my Instagram, this bike is probably one of the most aesthetic looking R6s. There's honestly no point of me ripping it around the canyons. When I first got the bike, I did want to actually make this into a track bike the previous owner of this bike he bought the bike brand new in 2016 and he had plans to make it a track bike I bought the bike from him only at about a thousand seven hundred miles so the bike was basically brand new when I bought it he didn't end up getting making it into a track bike so now here I am on my dream bike I do eventually want to get another bike probably another R6 to make into my track bike I think that'd be a really good idea because if I get good on the track riding this bike I'll be so much better of a street rider as well this summer I'm gonna do my first track day it's so easy to flick this thing around y'all hear those snap crackle pops yes sir I even get some pops on the way up sometimes and those are the best the pops on the upshift nothing much better than that thirdly we got the looks of this bike I mean I might be a little biased but I honestly think that this R6 is the most beautiful bike in the world this chassis of the bike, I've always been in love with this bike since I was a child. Look at this thing. Absolutely immaculate. And the tail is so aggressive on this thing. The front end is so aggressive. 
And I honestly like this bike better than the newer chassis of the R6 and R1. Let me know what you guys like better. This chassis or the newer ones? The only thing that I don't like about the newer ones is how they took off the big headlights in the front. I love the big headlights on this bike. That's the whole reason why I fell in love with this bike as a child was because these aggressive headlights in the front. But now they've taken those off. The newer bikes are more track oriented. But I do like the tails on the newer bikes a lot. The tails on the newer bike makes it look like it's a rocket jet. Airplane. I'm on an airplane right now as well. Come on now. I used to not like the new bikes as much, but slowly, slowly, the newer chassis has been growing on me. I'm gonna pull over here and give you guys a full walk around of this bike to really show you guys how nice this thing looks. Come on. You can't tell me that this isn't the best looking R6 out there. Especially with the all white going on it. And the white tires? Man, I love this thing. That's how aggressive it looks from the side. I think this angle, one of my favorite angles of the bike. Super aggressive tail, super aggressive front end. And just look at all the little lines and curves this bike has going on it. This Japanese engineering did really well. The symmetrical lines, the front end lines, these side lines, oh, this angle is really nice as well. Honestly, all the angles of this bike look so nice. So with the looks out of the way, the sound out of the way, this bike is pretty much one of the nicest looking and sounding bikes, in my opinion, out there. The last pro about this bike is this performance. So much power. Probably the fastest 600cc bike there is out there. Actually, on paper, it is the fastest 600cc bike. Also, just very much depends on the rider. I honestly don't push the very, very limits of this bike because I'm not trying to go down and I'm not trying to break the bike either. I spent a lot of money and time making this bike look the way it is and turn it into a show bike. And that's why I want to get a secondary bike to really rip around. But I feel like if I get a secondary bike, I'm going to turn it into a show bike as well. I'm going to make it look very nice because I really like aesthetics. What secondary bike do you guys think I should get? I've got a lot of bikes in mind. This year, I'm definitely going to get a new bike. I want to get either an S1K, a Ducati, or the R1 even. The reason why I wouldn't necessarily get an R1 and I'd rather get an S1K or a Ducati is because of how aggressive these Yamaha bikes are. That brings me to the first con of this bike that I have noticed is this bike it has the most aggressive seating that I've ever felt on a bike and I've sat on all different sorts of bikes. I think it's because this seat height. My seat height is literally like 36 inches which is almost the same height as the handlebars. So if you think about it you're really sitting high up in the air. It's nice for track riding but when it comes down to being comfortable, it's not the very, very best. For a bike that I'm not trying to bring to the track, I would want a little bit more of a comfortable bike. And this is my very unbiased opinion because I really do love this bike. But I can admit that it's not the most comfortable bike in the world. Even the R1, not a comfortable bike. These bikes are literally meant for you to be hunched over like this the whole time. Luckily, I'm kind of tall, so I don't have to be super hunched. I can still sit up a little and still reach the handlebars. But man, but man, does my back start to hurt 20, 30 minutes after riding if I'm going on a long ride. This bike is really meant to be on the track, guys. I just fell in love with this bike as a kid, so I've always wanted this, so I knew I was gonna get it. After finally riding it around for a bit, I've started to understand that, man, this thing can actually hurt the back. Wow, that was supposed to be my light. How can they stop my light and then letting these cars pass instead? Now I'm stuck here for another couple minutes. And that was a cop. Hopefully he's not after me. Like I was saying, the aggressive seating on this bike makes it actually a pretty uncomfortable ride if you're just trying to cruise around. It's not the most comfortable bike ever. And that's just the honest truth. If you want something that's more comfortable, more street friendly, I would not recommend an R6. This thing meant to be on the track. Also, the bike has pretty low, low end torque. 
Like the R6 is meant to be in the higher power ranges at all times. Same with a lot of 600cc bikes, but especially the R6, the torque really starts to kick in after you're about 10,000, 11,000 RPMs. When you're below, you don't really feel much. I have the Vortex V3 sprockets back and front and the chain. And I've gone down a couple tooth in the front and a couple tooth in the back, so I've got my mid-range torque to the way I wanted it to be. A stock R6 barely produces any power in the low to mid-range. Like when my bike was stuck, oh my gosh, I would really have to ring it out all the way. Now, I actually get power at like 6K, 8K RPMs, and I'm able to get the full power all the way through. However, my top speed has been brought down a little bit. I really want to be promoting safety on this channel. I don't want y'all to ride crazy. So I don't want to be influencing you guys and showing you guys how to ride crazy. Because at the end of the day, we do feel really unstoppable on this thing, and <laughs> We never know what might happen. That's the thing with bikes. We feel a little too unstoppable on here. Let's give it another sound check. See how it really sounds. And that wasn't even me ringing it out all the way, maybe to 10, 11K. Sorry, man. Didn't mean to blow out your eardrums. I'm over here jamming out to no music at all. That brings me to my third point which is I would not recommend this as a beginner bike at all. A lot of people think it's okay to hop on 600cc bikes as a beginner bike, but if you have no experience riding a motorcycle, I would not recommend getting an R6, especially this chassis, because it's very, very aggressive. The seating position is very aggressive. When you sit on it, you're all, all the way hunched over, so you kind of feel like you have to go fast. If you want to get on a 600cc, I would recommend getting a CBR 600. Those bikes are very nice and comfortable. Wow, I just got stuck in neutral. I would definitely recommend getting a CBR 600 or a Ninja ZX6. Those bikes are very comfortable, very ergonomically friendly. They won't break your back. I know you're hearing those. I know you're hearing those snap crackle pops. Oh yeah. Come on. Tell me there's some other bike out there that sounds nicer. Comment down below. Let me pull over here into this parking lot to show you guys really how aggressive this bike is. Look at this thing. I'm astonished every time I'm looking at it myself and it sits in the garage. But talking about the seat height, look at how high the seat is. The seat is almost directly as high as the handlebars. Seat height stock is 36 inches off the ground. That's really high. That's why a lot of people have struggles on this bike because they can barely reach the ground. And if you're tippy toeing on your bike, oh, I would not recommend you on there because when you're at a stoplight, you want to make sure you can flat foot the bike completely. Probably the most fun I have on a bike is on this bike. I love this thing. Look at them headlights. Sheesh. Most beautiful bike looking out there ever. Nothing will beat it. But you guys can tell it's a little more apparent on this side. Where the seat height is almost the same as the handlebar height. Super aggressive. When I sit on it, I'm actually able to flat foot the bike. Let me show you guys. Here's both my feet flat down on the bike. So it's nice, I'm able to have control over it. And here you will see a prime example of the last con that I have for this bike. It's the overheating. Look at the temperature right now. It says 201. And it's a super cold day outside today. I haven't even been ripping apart the bike like that. And it's already over 200 degrees. And this is something I've noticed only with R6s. Like they're the only bikes out there that actually get super hot and their fans kick on. The fans are about to kick on soon. Right when it reaches 210, the fans should kick on. The bike is sitting at 212, 214. So unless you're really riding it, there go the fans. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But these are some loud fans on this bike too. At least the bike has fans. Unlike the H2R, that doesn't have fans at all. 
when I'm riding it, it cools down super quick. But if I'm not riding it and it's at a stoplight, the bike overheats so much. And that's only a thing I've noticed with Yamaha R6s. Even my previous R6, even the new R6, they all get really hot really quickly. Luckily, the engine or the tailpipe isn't right underneath me, so I don't really feel the heat that much in the summer. I know it's probably because the bike is supposed to be on the track and it's not meant to be ridden long distances. It's supposed to be just mashed on for like maximum of a couple minutes straight and then cool down again. But hey, we out here trying to daily the R6, okay? I do what I want. Other than the fact that the bike gets really hot and it's super duper aggressive, there's not that many other cons to the bike. And I'm being fully honest about that. I've ridden all the different types of bikes before. I've ridden Jixers, Hondas, even the Ducatis. The only, only main issue I have with this bike is how aggressive it is. That's what makes the bike look so nice, is the aggressive. Because my favorite part of the bike is the looks. And the reason why it looks like that is because it really is an aggressive ride. Can't complain about too much, am I right? You gotta give some to get some. Oh, it's another biker. Hey. What's up, friend? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I made a friend on the road. That thing is clean, man. Oh, yeah. I used to want a red bike myself, actually. That's why my first helmet was a red helmet. Bye-bye, friend. Love meeting new riders on the road, man. I can't wait to throw another bikes and coffee event so I can actually meet y'all. And it's always bigger than bikes. You don't have to have a bike to come to one of my events. Hope you guys like the little review on the Yamaha R6. I need to hop on some other bikes. Maybe I'll do a review on a CPR 600 next. Still my favorite bike ever is this bike. I wouldn't get another 600cc bike. I would have to get a thousand next. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys want to see on this channel. I appreciate each and every one of you more than you guys would ever even know. Thank you guys for always supporting. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more content. Keep working on yourself and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.